And we're back. Hello again, and welcome to the Wood Carving Corner on KNFR AM. We'll be roasting chestnuts today and going over an olive oil salad with cornflakes. So uh, here's uh, we're doing skull a skull today, and I uh, just wanted to show you a few skulls that I've done, and uh, I've actually done quite a few, just haven't been able to find them. This is basically what we're going to try to replicate that little guy there, and. Um, Okay, so we're going to use this, uh, one of these little blocks here. They are the one and three quarter by one and three quarter by three inches. And, uh, I'll give you a link in the description, uh, for the guy. Get him off eBay. Um, I believe there's some other sellers on eBay as well, if you're just going to do a search for them. Um, and I imagine this, you know, I've done the skulls on all, all different shapes and sizes, so, um, you don't have to worry about too much. So I'm sketching over here, just kind of, you know, the basic... Uh, kind of what my uh, interpretation of a skull is. Um, although I do, on some of them I get a little bit anatomical, or I kind of make this like kind of style that makes them look anatomical. They're not really anatomically correct. Um, if you try to do the skulls, what they really look like, they, they generally don't come out well. Um, and before you start this project, do a search for um, skulls in art, um, especially in cartoons and illustration. And um, I just I'm trying to show you here in these sketches is it's just you're really just making a sphere with some holes. You make that little triangle, upside down triangle for his nose, and then uh, you have this kind of bottom part for his teeth. And if you get that part, I mean every, everything else, uh, it'll work out. And the more that you stylize it and just uh, use shapes, um, you know, the the more fun it will look like. It'll look. Um, it, it's one of the cool things about skulls is that. Um, they can be so simplified, so stylized, and still come across. Um, it's really when you try to make them detailed um, that, that they start to get messed up. On these, again, um, you'll see kind of what I do to get to get that kind of look. But it's basically I'm making a very simple shape and then uh, just kind of using some gouges to make it look textured. And uh, that's all that really is. So it's really an easy project, and I'd suggest it for uh, any level of wood carver. Uh, you could do this on a corner piece, uh, or you can do it on the front. It really doesn't matter. I mean, you don't, we don't have to deal with the nose on the skull, so uh, you can do whatever you want. You can certainly use a branch or a cylindrical piece. Uh, it would be fine, because that's what we're going to do with it anyway. And uh, here's kind of the profile here. And I actually don't end up carving on this piece of wood. The whole thing got a little sketchy. That piece of wood behind my hand in the back there, that long one, it was a piece of walnut that I tried to do it on. It was just the wrong shape and it was awful. So when I go and actually do this carving, I'm very frustrated and uh, I damaged my tools pretty bad in the carving process. Um, but uh, they were pretty sharp to start with so they <clears throat> they get through it. <clears throat> I just got my new some new DMT tools, uh, the diamond sharpening blocks and really been enjoying those. So, uh, so you can see I'm using this piece. It actually it's not it's missing some side pieces. I've done some practicing on it. I was teaching somebody, and uh, because I know this piece isn't going to have that need those corners at all, I'm just going to use that one. And again, I'm just kind of drawing it on there. Now that that's going to be it's gonna be a little smaller than what it's actually going to be because I want to keep the you know you don't you don't need to bring the wood in at all. That the the skull the top part that sphere circle. Um, you know, you don't let that be as wide as the widest point and as long as the, the longest point. <clears throat> so, uh, you're just going to start off here by rounding it over and uh, getting getting that kind of round shape on the top there, however you like to do that. I'm using um, a rough out carving knife, and that's really not necessary. Uh, you know, we're, we're using basswood here, so it's not a big of a deal. And all you know, all of his um, everything drops off after the cheeks, so you can just go ahead and take that down. Um, but it's really up to you. I I had done some skulls that were a little bit more square, where they they didn't drop off after the cheeks, and they they look pretty fun too because they're even more stylized. So, uh, but I was just trying to keep it simple on this one. So basically, the sphere, um, as far as measurements. Uh, it's just going to be, it's basically half of it on this. It's a three inch one, so it's like inch and a half down is where the nose is going to be, kind of the bottom of that, uh, the sphere is a good place. On this one, I'll open the mouth up, so um, 
you know, you could have a shorter piece than, than three inches, or you can do something underneath, um, you know, kind of have the skull sitting on something else if you want to. Um, it's fun to open the mouth. Um, you know, it kind of uh, gives it a little something, some dynamic stuff going on, and it's not too hard to do at all. And on opening the mouth, just like any mouth, uh, you know, you want to start start it lower than it should be, and then go up, and uh, or you could also think of it as um, you know, start the opening in the middle, and then you can open it on either side depending on how it's starting to look. You know, if it's too high, you can take wood out of the bottom of it. Alright, so you can see here this kind of this what we've done right here so far is really the the main shape and um, you want to really think about that when you when you start this um, that it's really just a sphere and there's basically just a smaller rectangle underneath it um, I probably could have done um, another few of these and then made the video uh, maybe have a little bit more of a simple process even though I try to do this a little bit quickly uh, I am bouncing around a little bit and um, uh, there's just I had some problem areas and uh, although that you know kind of shows you guys maybe some of the process it just um, it, it maybe makes it a little bit harder to, to understand how I get from point A to point B on some of the shapes um, so I'm um, sorry about that. Hope you guys can still learn from this. Um, so this, there's also you don't have to put the uh, the lower jaw in. Uh, you know, a lot of times skulls don't have the jaw, and um, and the lower jaw is probably the hardest part. So if you know you don't like the way it looks, or you just don't even want to try it, uh, you can just do you know the skull without it. And you know, I, sometimes they look even more cool when they don't have the jaw. So the other thing is, is you know. There's going to be room under the back of his, uh, under the back of the skull. On this one, you know, it's like we really are doing a sphere, um, and but in general, like on a real skull, the um, the, the the skull goes back more. Uh, it's more of an oval shape from the profile, the side view, and so you either you can carve that down and and have that, but generally because we're going to have it standing. Um, I'll put like a little bit of the neck vertebrae in there, kind of like a hint of that, and um, that seems to work. Uh, but like even in this one, I don't know, like I, I, the jaw ended up being too short, but then there was, you know, I still needed him to stand, so I just left wood under there, but it, it works, you know, so uh, I think it does, I guess. Um, so you can kind of figure that out beforehand, um, but I guess if you, if you didn't do any neck at all, you just had the jaw, you could probably just set it down and it still look good um, if you just committed to that. Um, or you could, you know, stick it on a post or something cool like that. I don't know. And you can maybe like um, have like a dowel in the stand, and then maybe like do like some feathers and stuff hanging down, have, like an Indian burial ground skull. Anyway, so here, um, you don't have to do any of this other like um, parts of the face. Um, I mean, the there is shape on the front of the skull. Um, but it's really not necessary. Again, for the style, just stylizing it, <clears throat> you could just round everything, keep it smooth, just do the, the eye sockets and the triangle, and just kind of go from there. Um, you know, and maybe a little bit of cheekbones. And those cheekbones are just kind of, just sit, you know, a little bit lower than where the um, that sphere is going to end. They just stick out just a little bit. Um... So here you can see, I kind of this is kind of how I set up my regular carvings. You know, I do the top of the brow, and then I get the nose out of there. And I do shape this one a little bit, so uh, I'll go in out. Um, re regular skulls have um, more shape to them. The the teeth stick out uh, much further than uh, the rest of the face, and it kind of um, it's a, an angle from from where the teeth meet. Uh, to the forehead that goes back, and we're, we're just not going to deal with that. Um, and the nose goes in a bunch, uh, but again, it's it's really not necessary. So you can see, it kind of looks like a, a regular face that we would do, a skinny guy, I guess, um, uh, from the other ones. But again, it's just kind of the difference is it's just you know making the eye socket so you know if you're doing a carving and the nose breaks off or you're not happy with it you can always turn it into a skull <laughs> I always did this uh, in drawing 
when I would uh, be drawing a lady or something, uh, especially when I was drawing an ink and having an eraser, and I'd mess up, I'd just, you know, start blacking out the eyes, give him some teeth, make him look like a zombie or something. Or I'd give him an eye patch if I messed up an eye. That was always the old standby for me. And I had a lot of uh, amputee drawings. People were like, you know, you're into amputees? But no, I messed up. Messed up on that one, so I gave her a hook for an arm instead, since it was the wrong shape. So, alright, we got sidetracked. Anyway, so we're just shaping in uh, the jaw a little bit. Again, it's not necessary, uh, but uh, there's some shape on the jaw. Uh, if you just kind of feel your own jaw um, and the way the teeth are. Uh, basically, the, the, the back of the jaw is going to go forwards. It's going to be a little bit of a flat spot, but it's basically kind of a triangle if, if we looked at it from the bottom. Um, so it comes in a little bit. Everything underneath the cheekbones um, has kind of the outer point of the jaw, and then it goes in. And then there's these kind of... Um, the skull... The, the, we have the, on our, our, our brow, right? It kind of goes out, and then behind that it goes in. And you don't really see that on people because there's uh, muscles that uh, control the jaw in there. They fill that out. You can feel a little bit where your brow on the side um, goes in, and then there's kind of some meat in there uh, before it goes back to skull just above the ear. And um, that's a nice little detail that you can put in there if you want. Um, I'd kind of only go for it if you're going to go for the textured look. If you're going to go for the, um, you know, you want to look up like Day of the Dead and these kinds of uh, skulls that are more simplified, um, then, then go ahead and skip that and just keep it real round. And so I'm working on the mouth here a little bit. Just do it a little bit by a little bit. Uh, you want to remember that um, when a mouth opens, the jaw hinges, right? So in the on both of the the up and upper and bottom, bottom, um, the upper and lower uh, teeth, they're gonna be flat. Um, and I mean they're they're in a row, right? The where they for the most part, it's in a row. You don't want them to curve up or curve down in the back. You don't want them to smile too much. Um, and you just kind of keep, you know, keep on it with a knife. And um, again, this is when you start it low and the mouth isn't open as much, it gives you some uh, room to work uh, so you can keep that straight. So anyway, so that top one's going to be basically um, horizontal, the, the bottom teeth row. Uh, you can see it's not quite yet there. Um, and then the bottom one, it's because it's hinging, it's going to be angled down just a little bit. But it's still going to be flat uh, or straight across. It's just going to be angled just a little bit. So just make, make try to make those flat, is what I'm saying. Um, Alright, so here I'm working on the, starting to gouge out the eyes a little bit. And um, this is one of the very few times that I will use a. Uh, you know, a small gouge. It's usually like my, you know, the, the half inch or whatever it is, number five. And um, for the most part, these kinds of tools are, I don't use them that often. And um, you just kind of stick them in there and start digging them out there. Um, it's real easy for these to get uh, not balanced. So if you want, um, like if you don't have one of these tools or whatever the case is, um, you can think about either that you're going to go for a circle, or you can go for that they're both like rectangles. Um, and then after you get those rectangles or the basic circles, like try to stay really controlled, then shape them into what you want them to look like. Uh, the eye sockets look very much like uh, sunglasses. They look like aviator sunglasses. But again, if you're going for um, you know the more stylized one, I would I would suggest just using uh, circles because it always looks good and um, it's very easy to lose the shape in the eye sockets um, when you're going for inhale so side circles and yeah you just kind of use your knife to get in there uh, this is the uh, I use this knife a lot and I use it um, improperly this one I chip out the edge real bad during this carving um, I mean, uh, I don't use the sound from these because I'm like watching. Actually, I think I'm listening to uh, the Tommy Knockers during this uh, recording. But you would hear the awful noise of me, um, you know, using the knives and uh, prying out the tips while they chip out. 
So here, this is how we're going to do the nose. Um, and you want to start it smaller than what you think it's going to be. And you generally do that with chip cuts. You're going to start with a real small one and then go back in there with some other ones. So that that's really all it is. And um, remember to do uh, angled cuts, angle them in towards the inside of the nose so that um, you're not making it too fragile. And this is also so that the, the cuts will meet up. And so this, the teeth, they happen pretty easily like this. Um, I've done another teeth video. If you want to look more into that, um, check out the channel. Um, but this is basically the, the technique. You just kind of stab the, uh, the knife in there and uh, wiggle it around. It depends on the wood. Some of the times you don't have to wiggle it around, but you can get more of a, a line there. And this is more than enough, um, especially because I'm going to do an antique process on this one, a, gl uh, a glaze. And that uh, the stain will stick in those little crevices real nice. And you can see for the top of the teeth, I just used that, uh, that little gouge again. And if you want, you can do some more shaping, but it's not necessary. And um, so if you don't have the gouge for the top of the teeth, and actually some of the gouges, if you have like the right size um, number 11, the veiner um, gouge, uh, you can, it'll get the whole tooth in there. Or that one may work if it's a smaller one. It just, the size just all depends. Um, so... Anyway, if you don't have that, you can also use a V-tool to do that. Um, that makes it look even more realistic. Um, or you just use your knife, you know, for the top ones. And, um, you know, depending on the size, you know, you do two, you just do a little uh, v shape cut. Or um, if there's enough room, do three cuts to make that top of the tooth. <clears throat> I had already damaged the tip of this knife, so I'm going back to the DMT stone there. Give it a little bit more, and then strop it up. And then after I do the, uh, the strop with the strop paste, I go to uh, a rougher strop without any paste at all, just for the fun of it. And actually that was a bit of a worthless exercise because I, I had damaged the tip too much. Uh, I need to go back to a rougher grit to uh, get past those chips I had taken out of the tip. So the cheeks, uh, if you want to go for the realistic kind of uh, style, uh, the cheeks go in a little bit. Uh, there's kind of a curve on the bottom, which I haven't quite defined completely yet. You can see I'm doing it right there. And that'll go in on all sides, kind of curve into the teeth. And then uh, they also curve in a little bit to the nose. Um, generally, the nose is going to be uh, more forward than the cheeks, but we don't. we're not doing a a super three-dimensional skull here so or at least on the front so just to kind of um, show a little bit of that uh, separation between the nose and the cheeks I just do a little bit of that and again I'm kind of jumping around here on where I'm working um, when you're opening the mouth you're going against uh, you know you're going against the grain there um, so just take it little by little and you can see even this uh, the scalpel knife uh, will make it through there which is you know some of the tougher cuts um, man I can't find my regular V tool so I got this one working it's a no-name brand which I would not suggest buying because uh, a lot of the no-namers are not made with good metal uh, this one apparently is not too bad though I gotta say it kinda makes me wonder which one it was now Anyway, so here's the jaw here, kind of the bottom of the jaw, and um, I, I maybe could have opened the jaw all the way down to the bottom. I'm not sure why I decided at this point to draw that out, um, but I don't know. In the end, it worked, and it probably it just, even without opening the mouth more, um, the jaw probably could have just gone to the bottom, because it's maybe a little bit thin at the end, but whatever. Say it will be. So, I, I guess just drawing it in kind of helps you to see what's actually going on there. So here I'm trying to get out a little bit underneath the cheeks here. And get out the back of the jaw. So there's a little bit of space if you want to go for the, for the gusto on this stuff. A little bit of space. Um, 
that's um, in between the uh, the back teeth on the top and the, the start of the jaw. And, um, I'll you see me defining it at different points um, throughout this. And there's also right here this little jobby because the top of the jaw has um it's it goes into two kind of joints. So there's a separation. So it's another little detail you can add. You can see I kind of already did it on that side. And I'm just bringing in this kind of curve a little bit more. And it, you can tell from the shape that he looks a little bit like Mr. Potato Head. He, um, he doesn't quite have the... His overall shape just isn't quite working real great. Um, he's a little bit, you know, long, horse face looking. And um, so I'll spend some time on that, try to figure that out. Um, in general, it's just spending time defining all of the, the characteristics that you have there. Um, just defining them more, you just spend time, make them deeper, uh, make them more funky. And in the back here, you can see this is where the back of the skull is going to be. And we'll start the vertebrae. And again, that's about halfway from the top to the bottom. And then, let's see. Take a lot of that wood out. Um, the vertebrae, um, they're actually pretty easy to get uh, to look pretty nice. Um, it's mostly just doing a grid with a V tool and, uh, and it'll translate pretty well. As you've seen, the, you saw that one guy with had the arms. Um, I don't know, I've done a few torsos and they're really fun to do and they're really not, not that hard. Uh, they're easier than doing the skull. But again, I'm just doing stylized versions of them. Okay, so I'm going to make the nose a little bit bigger here. And I have a kind of medium size uh, V tool here that has a really sharp point on it. And you kind of do that. It's a, you know, if you want to use your V tool, it's fine. But um, you may want to just stick with the knife. As I, as I go back to there, it's gonna the angles really are too sharp um, for any V tool. And you just kind of dig it out there. Um, it, you if you want to look at like a real skull, they kind of have you know they have a bit of a septum. It's not the actual septum, but it's the, where the septum connects to in the middle. And uh, it's not super necessary. I think what I did on this one is um, I really just left it out until the end and then just left a tiny little kind of like curve on each side on the bottom to have a little bit of a suggestion of it. I'm kind of regretting uh, doing this style of skull now. Um, maybe we should have just done a super stylized one. Um, but it's always fun to see um, what what skulls you know uh, artists and whatnot make um, the interpretation uh, of them. It's one of the things that really um, changes, I guess, uh, through the lens of the mind and the projection of it, and um, and, and all the different ways that uh, we recognize those symbols that we make. Um, but yeah, you know, a lot, a lot of like a lot of carving, um, you know, you really don't need to ha um, have really great, you know, anatomy skills, drawing skills, or anything. Um, mostly, it's just a, a willingness to experiment and commit to the ideas, and then just kind of, um, you know, keep looking at it and and make it aesthetically pleasing. And instead of worrying about um, making it look like um, the real thing or uh, whatever your idea is. A lot of part about you know making art is um, accepting your um, your kind of mistakes. You know what what a lot of people when they make art, um, they draw or whatever, uh, or do carvings. The, the what they see themselves is that they'll see um, you know basically places where they need to improve or where they're still not very good, or it's just kind of takes up this place in your mind where it's like. Um, you know all your your faults. The you know what the whole part about not not being able to make what you want, and um, 
I think our brains always do that again because uh, we can think of, uh, you know, we can imagine a skull, we can imagine a person's face, but the ability to replicate that idea is uh, not there. And we have this other strange process in, in place of it. But anyway, so the at some point, you know, you, you'll realize that um, basically that, that all that whole style that is yours, it, it, it's, uh, that's actually the interesting part about art. Um, that's why people like to look at it. And, um, you know, it takes a long time to, to see it as something that that's actually the good part. You know, some, a lot of may have, uh, oh, here, look, I found a, um, let's skip topics here. This is a veneer tool where it's not just like a, a sweep. It has some walls on it. It's so a number 11 usually. Um, and that will do the whole tooth. It's a really skinny one though, so I really have to wiggle it. And then I think I have to go back in to get the bottom out on there. Because I'm not seeing anything right now. Anyway, the point is, on the whole art thing, I mean, um, and carving, is that, um, you know, you just keep working it, work the craft, and you'll get your little ways, and then you get more confident, and your your lines look more confident. And that's that's really what it is. Uh, there's so few uh, carvers um, that are, are really good um, anatomical kind of artists and drawing and whatnot. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I it's it's very rare. So don't worry about that if you can't draw or have no art background. Um, you know, wood carving and whittling in in uh, just about every country where it's been alive in past generations. I mean, this is it's a blue collar hobby, and um, even the guys who are really good at it. I mean, uh, now the guys that I look up to. Most of them are, are not, not very good at drawing, and uh, they don't have a lot of anatomical uh, experience or education. And it's one of the things, again, it's one of the things that makes it, their stuff so good is that, uh, you know, what, what shapes happen instead of the anatomy or to symbolize the anatomy. And then over the, you know, the years or time, uh, the mind kind of, you know, using that symbol and uh, evolving it and uh, into more and more aesthetically pleasing shapes, and um, you know that's really what what you want in, in art. And uh, we've kind of lost that in a lot of uh, in the art world in general. I mean, a lot of it's digital stuff, and um, a lot of stuff that's happened with computers and Photoshop. That's really you know taken away the the people's understanding of, uh, you know, why art is special, why handmade things are special, and it is that, uh, that the object is a symbol that has been produced by somebody's mind, that it's been, the thing has been filtered through somebody's mind, it's not just a photograph, it's a, uh, you know, we don't have any, uh, any way to, to show other people what's actually in our mind. We have language, which is extremely um, structured, and it can be used, of course, but um, there's nothing like a visual uh, symbol that's been projected from somebody's mind that you can see and be like, you know, there, there's nothing else that we can show each other to show uh, that we all kind of have the same uh, internal landscape and it's not a, a clockwork of mechanism inside our minds. It's uh, a flowing, you know, nonsensical. It's not nonsensical, excuse me, but it's it's not as as uh, tight and mechanical as the world and all of our other expressions generally are. I'm sorry, I'm getting like way too deep into this, but I don't know what else to talk about while I mess up this carving here. On the back there, I'm taking down uh, all this wood uh, underneath the skull, getting ready to do those vertebrae there. And again, you see it's just kind of like the back of the skull, it's just basically a, uh, a sphere again. And getting that jawline worked out, taking the wood away from underneath that. And you can make the vertebrae as thick as you want, or, or not thick. Uh, you can, I think in this one, and on the teeth, there's a few points, again, because I hadn't carved this, 
I haven't been carving these too much recently. Okay, I hadn't carved it all recently except for the one right before this. And um, so, I, I'm, again, I'm just kind of going through discovery process and it's not, the whole thing's not nailed down. So this is what you do for the vertebrae here. You're going to run your VTools up there. And uh, so that's going to be, the vertebrae are basically like, what really sticks out is like there's a, I don't know what you would call it, like a lobe or whatever that comes out of the back, right? That's like when you see somebody's spine, there's these bumps that's coming, that's a sticking out from the column of the this vertebrae. And then they come out on the sides as well. Um, and then, of course, down after the neck, those turn into the, the ribs. So you still have those on your neck. They're just like uh, little lobes, just like the, the back ones are. So there's basically three lobes that you're trying to do on this column. And so that's what we're going to describe here in a very basic and, and uh, stylized manner. And uh, you, you see it uh, It generally works, especially after um, get the uh, the stain on there and everything. And um, yeah, this is what we're going to do right here. And so if you want to, you can make them all the same size. Nobody's going to notice. Um, but the vertebrae, get, they go from small to large. They go from small at the skull to larger down towards the thoracic rib cage area. <clears throat> and there. This is a great example, though, of uh, a very simple stylized um, anatomy that really works and is more fun than probably trying to actually carve out uh, a realistic approach. Uh, what happened there? Oh, I ran out of battery. All right. Right, so you can see the other fellow there, uh, the finished one, um, and I will try to do a bit on some of the teeth. It's, uh, it's really not necessary, but if you want to do extra some kind of detail texture, you, basically what I'm doing right now, and you can't really see it uh, not a little bit, so you're just making little divots after the teeth, um, and there's basically like... Um, I don't know, there's these ridges that go and they kind of uh, follow the lines of the teeth down uh, in the jaw and also up the face and um, some of them actually go, they follow that rounded curve from the, the, from the cheek down to the top of the teeth um, and you can see that's in there a little bit. If you look at a real skull you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, <clears throat> so you kind of, there's kind of this movement from uh, the teeth that basically just keeps going on the bottom and uh, from the top and just kind of blossoms out into the cheeks and uh, into the nose. And so, yeah, this guy's getting close to being done here. Um, and I could maybe round out his head a little bit more. But you can see, you know, he's, he's looking a lot better just from... Uh, developing, uh, you know, basically what was already there after the first five minutes. Um, and you'll see that he also, like this other guy, um, he'll look way better after he gets uh, treatment and his details will come out a little better. So um, I do have another video on the glazing, my antiquing process, but I'll go through it here. Let me speed up the footage though, because this is already getting a little long. So, let's see, right, so I kind of have all this wood still here, and you get that out of there, you don't have to, but, on a larger skull I did, um, there was enough room in the back, like behind the jaw, I, still, I wanted to stand like these, and so I made like a kind of design, like a canthus shape, um, so you don't have to do, um, vertebrate if you don't want. I mean, there's all kinds of, depending on how much wood you have, you do all kinds of fun stuff. Or just leave it. And you just kind of leave it one shape and it'll it'll come across. So you can develop those vertebrae more if you want. Um, but there's really no need to. I, don't know, I started messing around with them here and uh, I kind of wish I hadn't. But whatever. There's something fun about leaving things in simple geometric uh, shapes and still having them recognizable. Um, so because they are 
I mean, basically with this, you know, we're talking about the lobes, the nodes that come out of the um, come out of the column of the, the vertebrae. Um, I'm basically not showing any of that column, and you would. So if you wanted to work out that more, you would make these more like nodes that were attached to a kind of cylindrical an object, and you would see part of that cylinder in between those nodes. And you can't see what it did there. Yep, needed to do that one and that chip right there. That's going to finish it. All right. So, yeah, uh, there, dig, dig up Novo more. Now, I mean, you know, I'm just messing around here again with all these features, but um, this is basically the finished pro project. Um, and so we're going to use the, uh, the matte urethane. This is just what I've been using lately, and uh, you know it's been working really well, especially with the basswood. Doing the matte urethane and then the gel stain on top, um, it, it keeps it from uh, the basswood like soaks up all the different finishing is finishes, and after you put it on there, it'll like still look furry on top. Like it, you know, you don't want it to be glossy, but you don't, you know, you want it to look like it's finished. I guess I don't know how to explain that. If you've ever put a stain on basswood, you know what I'm talking about. Alright, so we're basically done here. Um, we're gonna we're gonna brush him up a little bit, brush his teeth there. Yep, get him make sure he doesn't have cavities. Oh wait, this is another thing is you can um Okay, first before I get off the subject here, um the, the toothbrush, clean toothbrush is a really good idea, especially with basswood. Um it'll get those little pieces out of there. You see, there's actually still more than I need to get out. See those little pieces? Those will come off with the toothbrush. We just brush at it. Um, little chunks that are just barely hanging on. But, um, you, oh, so you can take a tooth out if you want. You can take a, multiple teeth out, and it can make it look cooler. You just have to kind of figure out um, what's going to be behind the teeth. Um, if, you know, you, I think on one that I made, um, I really carved out behind the teeth. On this one, they're not. Like, it goes in a little bit under behind his teeth, but it's not like there's what, you know, not like they're actual teeth. Um, so if you do that, leave the teeth really thick, like very cartoony. You see this little detail? I'll get back to that. The detail I put in there, it helps a lot. It's, it's just like that little kind of separate the cheekbones from the brow line on the sides there. That's all that was. And then uh, if you want, you can kind of do this. Uh, we have this weird shape in the middle of our brow, which uh, doesn't really show uh, on most people um, but if you don't want to do that shape you can have them look like mean or whatever and just have some straight lines coming up from the middle like when people's brows crease you can kind of do those kind of lines and that'll work um, you know depending on how friendly or uh, happy you want your uh, guy to look uh, but anyway on the teeth uh, when you take those out um, Leave it thick so it they'll it won't be too fragile, and then you can uh, you can remove some teeth and that'll that'll look fun. Um, I it's, I especially suggest that if you're gonna do no lower jaw, no jaw on it at all, then you can um, because that's you know when you see the the really old skulls they'll be missing the jaw and they'll be missing like a lot of the teeth, so it's just hard to pick out which teeth should be gone. I don't know. So here we're going to be kind of just adding some of this kind of just texture detail. Um, you know, we just kind of did, but um, I, I don't know. Again, it's it's not really like anything designed. It's just when you're doing skeletons and stuff, um, it, it uh, just adds something. And, that, you know, when you guys saw the, the other one, looks like I really went into anatomy. And it's like, it's just random texture to kind of trick the brain. We already have the basic object. The brain says, okay, this is a skull. And then while it's looking at it, it's in the kind of, you know, surrounding background thoughts. It's going to be seeing a lot of detail. And it's kind of, you know, fakes out the brain uh, to think that there's more um, real information than there is. And uh, that's basically how it's done. So you just kind of, you know, run this thing over to give it that kind of textured bony look. Because a 
the human body doesn't have like a lot of uh, concave curves, curves that go in, but bones do. They have a lot. Um, they're it's very much a meeting of a lot of uh, you know inward curves that uh, I don't know. It's basically so because it's supposed to match the muscles, right? The muscles are all uh, convex. They're uh, outwardly rounded. And so they have to fit into the bones, and so the bones are all the opposite, and they have inward curves. So that's why uh, doing these kind of random gouges um, can give the brain trick it into thinking that it's more anatomically correct or more detail-oriented as far as a, a bone. And I'm going to separate out this little back here, the jaw and the top of the teeth, back of the teeth. Yeah, I don't know if you guys noticed how bad I chipped off the tools in this. Without the sound, I mean, there's like, you can't really tell. And I guess you just can't see that up close. I get a little bit OCD about how sharp my knives are. I don't like when uh, I want to leave that shiny um, wood behind after it carves. I don't like to see any lines. I don't like to see any tear outs. But that's now. I mean, back in the day, I'd just be happy to be carving. It took me a long time to learn how to sharpen, so... All right, so there you go. You see how flat the front of his face is, the profile there, uh, but it still works. And uh, that's basically it. So let's go get some uh, matte polyurethane. And here we are with that. Oh, oh, we're not done. We're not done. I was just kidding. We're gonna make his nose a little bigger. It was, it was a little bit small. It really was. I knew that. Yeah, the nose. I think normally on a skeleton, it goes that far. Almost like it's, yeah, it goes up to the past the bottom of the eye sockets. Uh, it doesn't have to go up there, but whatever. And then I'm going to separate out. Uh, here we go. This is where we get that a uh, little bit of that septum attachment going. Now that it's a little bigger, I can fit that tool in there. And then I need to get the, okay. All right, we're going to do that. Do that. Okay, so the nose has like a, um, if you look at, at a, a real skull, it has like a, uh, I, I don't know, it goes in, kind of like I did on the, the side of the eye sockets. It um, has the top part of the nose that sticks out, and then it goes in, and then the bottom of it goes out a little bit. So on the sides of the nose, or I'm, I don't know what you call it when the nose isn't there, it's the, the nose hole. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. Last minute here, I'm trying to get some extra little details in. Really not necessary at all. I kind of messed it up. Whatever. Yeah, taking out all the detail work on the teeth. Good job, buddy. Great job. And. So you can leave the teeth like this where they're kind of, um, you know, they're all like flat. Uh, so besides taking some out, another way you can mess them up is, um, you know, people, you know, do basically this, reshape them a little bit. And it doesn't just round them out, but it'll, it, it actually kind of creates this, uh, like, if it's a teeth aren't necessarily straight, which nobody's teeth are completely straight. Even when you have braces, they're all angled somewhat differently and they had they're all like differently shaped they're not really just like uh, piano keys so just a few of these little cuts to round off the edges um, make a much more organic looking guy there so I don't know I have so many ideas for videos that I mean I don't think I'll get back to it but maybe one day I'll do a stylized skull so yeah see all these little wood chunks that are hanging off I'll, I'll get that with the brush. No, I won't. I'm just going to urethane it right now. <clears throat> uh, you see I used the spine of that knife, not any part of the tip, to pry that thing off. Which I really shouldn't be doing in the first place. So here I'm using a brush that is stiff and gross, and it'll work good enough. Um, I really just kind of go for it with this stuff. And, uh, you know, on the skull, you want to make sure that with the stain <clears throat> and this stuff, that you get it really into all of the uh, crevices. 
and do that however you can. So you can't really put too much of this stuff on in the beginning. Um, it's really just kind of after you get the whole thing coated that you go back and um, <clears throat> take it out of places where there's like excess excessive amounts. And um, I, I wouldn't, you know, you can, I you know, swathe it on there or whatever, but I wouldn't really dip it. And you can also get this stuff in a spray, but I don't know with a project like this where it's got a lot of indentations, it's just easier to do this, I think. And this stuff dries pretty quick too. So yeah, just get it all on there. I get it on my hands too. You could wear gloves probably. Might be a good idea. And, oh, I'm getting out of frame here a little bit. Right. Yeah, um, this is how I get my skin to look so nice. Is I, I do a couple of coats of polyurethane. And... Uh, it really softens it up. You can see I have a lot of patience when I do this. Um, so after, see I'm kind of wiping it off there. I'm basically looking at spots where it's like really collecting. Because <coughs> um, you don't, it, a lot of it will soak in. But if it's just like too much, it'll it'll like stay there, and you'll have this kind of Elmer's glue spot. Um, some you don't have to get too OCD about it, but um, some of it will be fixed by um, the the glaze that we put on the gel stain. Um, it will because it's like a matte whatever, so it'll cover up if it's shiny at all or if there's any spot. It's like just way too much, but. You don't need to have any pools of it um, on the skull or on your piece. All right, so we'll close that up. And here we're going to look at some pictures of Cookie. Cookie's coming in to hang out for some of it. Oh, look at that beautiful can. Look at these. She looks like a sea urchin with her whiskers in the sunlight. So we're almost out of this gel stain. I'm going to have to get some more. Uh, I might get one that's a little bit more yellow next time. Um, sometimes I do just put the stain straight on to um, get, get back in. Um, sometimes I will squirt the stain straight on the piece. Um, I try to do this as fast as I can because um, you know you want you want to wipe it off and you want it to all <clears throat> you want it to all be the same um, kind of color or have soaked soaked in as as the same amount. And so sometimes on pieces that are um, maybe more like face sensitive, um, then I'll, I'll do everything else and I'll do the face last. Um, not too worried about it on this guy. By the way, I let the um, I let that dry overnight, the urethane. Um, it Because it, you don't want to, uh, the chemicals that are in like the, the gel stain, you don't want that to start to release mix with the um, urethane and release it and then just have it all mix up and have the stain go too deep. <clears throat> I'm doing a little print here because it's getting everywhere. Yeah, and again, not wearing gloves with the stain. I'll try it. Yep, there we go. Yeah, when you guys see how my hands are dirty and I have like stuff under my nails, you know why now. So it's really hard to get the stuff on the end grain, especially because if I just carved it or whatever, then it wouldn't be a problem. But so we need some more. We're just gonna squirt it straight on there. Make a mess of things. I mean, if you're not worried about how much stain you're using, you can just go crazy with it since we are wiping it off. <laughs> and on this project, um, like in the eye sockets and in the nose, we want to really leave the stain in there. You can leave it thick, and uh, it won't look it won't look bad. Um, it's not like the urethane where if you have a pull of it and it dries, it looks like bad. It generally will look good, 
unless it's in a weird place or something you don't want it. It's if, if it's in a crevice or a detail, then it'll generally look good. So this has a lot of crevices, so it's taking me a little bit to make sure it's all in there. You want to tilt um, your carving like at different angles to see if you've gotten in all the places. Um, because just from your brush strokes, from whatever angle you're brushing from, it's going to have a tendency to not do all of them. This is generally what I do on the first brush, or the first uh, wipe off, to just do this. Because a lot of places are really thick, I just kind of squeeze it. And then I see what it looks like out of it from there. And there, there's the Shroud of Jesus. I mean, the skull. Never mind. Alright, um... So let's take a look at this. See if we need to wipe it off at all. Yes, we're gonna wipe it off some. I'm sure we would try to wipe his teeth off a little bit, you know, get them a little bit lighter. It would be cool to do one and like not do teeth and just do holes, and then like have a lighter wood um, and put them in there. Or you could like you could like save your own. I don't. Never mind. I'm not gonna go into that. But you could put like you know. Maybe not even wood, you could use ivory or... Is that illegal? You could use some horn or cow bone or something to make the teeth. Or if you have a baby, you can save the baby teeth and put it into like a skull carving. Is that weird? Put like some like hair on top of it and then do the feathers. Like and do this like sacrifice in the middle of your living room. Not, I mean not to sacrifice, but you know. You would be doing voodoo, I think. It's really late at night. It's it's almost three here. I have to do these at night because uh, I'm too embarrassed to do this um, in front of my girlfriend. Yeah, I, it's funny because um, I get embarrassed to talk in front of like the one person to get stage fright. <clears throat> then I post videos online for thousands of people. It's hilarious. So here I'm just kind of like touching up, doing whatever, and actually um, I don't think I show it, but um, I had to go back in the next day with a Q-tip and put more gel stain on to get in his eye sockets to make sure they're fully black. Um, but that, you don't really see it here, so it doesn't matter. So here he is finished, and uh, I think he, wor he worked out pretty well for me having all kinds of a mess there. And if you guys have any questions about this, uh, you know, hit me up. You know where to find me. And, um, yeah, I don't know. Hope you guys enjoyed that, and uh, carve safe, right?